Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the growing family, turn notifications on so you never miss an upload and hit the thumbs up button because it really does help me out. Woo! I said that really quick today. So I thought today we could have a bit of a chat about mental health. And by chat I just mean we're just going to talk. important to talk about mental health because it's still quite a stigmatized thing it is becoming there are there is a lot of awareness about mental health now but there are still some ignorant people in the world so let's educate so yeah hi i'm lydia i'm diagnosed with bipolar type 1 bpd depersonalization derealization ptsd anxiety depressive disorder insomnia autism adhd Dyslexia, arthritis, POTS, I think that's all of them. Oh, and EDNMS, I always forget the eating disorder. But now it consumes most my life. So, yeah, mental health is a huge part of my life. I take medication three times a day now because my dick of a psychiatrist stopped my haloperidol. Well, half my haloperidol, causing me to hallucinate. Yeah, it's not fun. So yeah, mental health. Mental health affects approximately one in four people, which is a crazy statistic. Now, as someone who's diagnosed with BPD, let's talk about this for a minute, because BPD is a highly stigmatised mental health condition. People are called narcissistic, abusive, manipulative, and I don't think that's the case at all. BPD is a trauma disorder. Well, technically it's a personality disorder, but what it means to be a borderline is you face daily stigma. I've lost so many friends because I have BPD and honestly it's plain simply heartbreaking. I used to have friends that lived all over the country and I used to go visit them. People around you just don't understand how emotional it is to lose a friend. When you lose friends as a borderline you just want to implode because you do everything you can to keep that person in your life and it's still not enough. Then we have this PTSD stigma. Now PTSD stigma isn't as bad as borderline personality disorder stigma but it is definitely there. Now PTSD is a trauma disorder plain and simple it's literally post-traumatic stress disorder. The biggest misconception with this is that you have to have been to war to have PTSD when in reality you can have PTSD for any trauma. Now for me, my trauma wasn't my mum abusing me, it was watching my ex-boyfriend commit suicide. Now I'm not going to go into the details of that because I don't want to, but all in all, PTSD is a very hard sort of you have the triggers, you have flashbacks, you have nightmares. Now in my case I get a lot of nightmares and I wake up at like 3 o'clock in the morning crying and there is literally nothing I can do to prevent that. Then when we look at eating disorders, there's so much stigma that you have to be underweight to have an eating disorder. I weigh 63.7 kilograms and I'm five foot two. I'm trying to get down to 55 kilograms because that's a healthy weight for me and my clothes will fit me. <laughs> eating disorders aren't weight disorders. They affect, an eating disorder affects so many aspects of your life. It's stigmatising to assume that you have to be underweight to have an eating disorder. I have an eating disorder and I'm not underweight. I have EDNOS, which is now known as OSFAD. Then we have dissociative disorders. Now obviously there's DID, OSDD, depersonalisation, derealisation. I have depersonalisation and derealisation. I have had for about five years now. And yeah, let's talk about it. So dissociative disorders are more than just dissociating. Dissociative disorders are more than just dissociation. They often stem from trauma. And the key thing you're going to realise here is a lot of mental health conditions do actually stem from trauma. Obviously not in every case, say bipolar, schizoaffective disorders, schizophrenia, 
borderline personality disorder, EDNMS, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder. But dissociative disorders are, well for me, I have depersonalization and derealization. One of them means I dissociate I dissociate and my surroundings change so they don't look like my surroundings. The other one is where it trans... I don't know how to explain it. If I was looking in a mirror, I don't see myself. I see an imposter. So, dissociative disorders are quite manipulative <laughs> with the brain. The brain's manipulating the person. Ooh. But yeah. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you want to have a, a Q&A, please leave a question in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and if you are new, like I said at the beginning, make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the growing family. I'm aiming to reach 6.5k. We're currently... 61 away <laughs> so yeah